Zoom recording. Okay. So last time we uh, uh, laid down some definitions. Okay. So first we look at what is a computational problem. Okay. So it is a, speci a specification where we have a certain input and uh, we have a desired output. So let's say if we have uh, the ingredients of uh, ingredients of a food okay, or a, a dish, then that's our input and output. So the ingredients is the input and the output is the dish. Okay? From a computational standpoint, let's say I have uh, a, an array of characters or an array of numbers and my desired output would be a sorted version of the same array. Okay, so that's our input and output. Now, the instance of a problem, okay, are all the inputs necessary to compute the solution. Okay, so all the instantiation variables and everything, parameters, if you could call it, that is what we call the instance of a problem. Now, the algorithm comes in uh, when we work now to transform our input, our input and, and to our desired output. So these are the specific tasks or set of instructions in order to accomplish that transformation from input to output, okay? Uh, achieving the desired input and output relationship. And we also mentioned that an algorithm is correct if the algorithm stops at the, uh, at the right output, okay? So if, it's, if you arrive at the right output, but the algorithm still continues after that, then that means there's something wrong with your problem, uh, with your algorithm, okay? Or rather, if it doesn't stop at all, then there, uh, there's something wrong again with your algorithm. So it's correct algorithm if it stops at the right output. Okay, and just to insert data structures as early as now. Okay, it's a way to store and organize data in order to facilitate access and modifications. Right. Uh, we also tackled a little on analysis of algorithms, which is a theoretical study of computer program performance and resource usage. And the reason why we are doing this is because we want our algorithms to be scalable, not just working, uh, that it doesn't just work on small num small data sets, small size data sets, but also right, when the, the data sets grow, um, it should work uh, accordingly. Okay? At the same time, uh, it's feasible as well, meaning it gives us the output at a reasonable amount of time. And from a performance perspective or behavior perspective, it also becomes the language on how to describe the behavior. Okay? If it grows exponentially, if the if the runtime grows linearly or proportional to the to the data size, those were the uh, those are the things that uh, on how we communicate the, uh, the the behavior or performance of the algorithms. And also, it defines the cost uh, or the currency. Uh, when it comes to resource usage. Okay, so last time we did an example on the suit of cards and how would you sort them. Uh, let's say you were given this deck of cards, like a 10, 11, 12, or I mean 11 and 12. Let's say just treat, treat them as jack and queen, and then we sort it one by one by simply selecting kung ano yung, by simply moving, uh, the, swapping the cards whether if they are not in order. Okay, so our definition by ordered okay, last time is that when the left card or left number is, uh, is less than the right uh, number. Okay, so we swap 1 and 12, and then, oops, and then afterwards, if we compare the next number, okay, 7 and 12 are not in order, so we swap them, 3 and 12, and, three and uh, 12 are not in order, so we swap them. The resulting the resulting swap uh, are, are uh, results to seven and three, which is also not in order. So we swap them again. So now we have three at its right position. Okay, and then we do this all along until we arrive at our sorted uh, numbers. Okay, yeah, and you sorted numbers. So we just keep on swapping or uh, swapping until uh, we arrive at the right order. Okay, and uh, from a performance, from an analysis perspective, okay, we have various algorithms. Okay, so as the input size grows, the runtime grows as well, and the scale of that growth in runtime is how we define the 
performance of the algorithm. So let's say algo one is a linear, uh, has a linear growth compared, uh, then it's a linear uh, algorithm, okay, or a linearly growing algorithm, okay. Algo two grows uh, uh, on a quadrat on a, I'm about to, squared two, eh? so uh, on a power of two basis, okay. Uh, algo three and four are both logarithmic, so it grows logarithmic logarithmically. Okay, so you want to improve your algorithm by improving the runtime compared to the input size. Okay, that's day one. Quick uh, brief of day one. Actually, lot of slides on day one. Pinasa ko na. So, uh, for the review. Okay, for now, we will look into number representation. So, what we want to achieve at this section is for you to understand uh, how computers store numerical data and it, to extent that's how computers store um, images, videos, text, okay, in the forms of numbers, okay. So we will go down at that level, okay, and uh, just to because it will help us understand how computers would process uh, those things. And later on, when it comes to algorithms, okay, uh, you would know also na hindi lahat automatic talaga sa computer, okay. So Let's say even adding numbers, how do we actually add or subtract numbers? Okay, hindi siya is as easy as uh, how we do it in real life. Okay. Um, also, we were talk we will be talking about uh, number systems. Okay, so we will see how to convert one number system to another. Okay. Uh, and also to perform arithmetic on binary system. Okay. So those are the three uh, learning objectives for this lecture for the number representation topic. Okay, so before we proceed with all the maths, okay, let me just share you um, the father uh, or uh, kung sino may pakanaan itong uh, topic na to, <laughs> as you would, uh, if you would put it that way. So let me introduce Claude Shannon. Okay, he's a mathematician, electrical engineer, and cryptographer, uh, and is also one of the pioneers who shape computer science in its early stages. So as you can see, he's not a computer scientist, but from his background on mathematics and electrical engineering, he was able to perform calculations on a circuit board using um, switches uh, on the board. Okay, So by simply doing a, an on and off, okay, he was able to do a basic arithmetic on also based on that Boolean logic. <laughs> okay, So if uh, if you uh just to give you a background okay so boolean okay it's uh represented by true true or false okay so just two just two representations and when it comes to to um electronics okay it can be represented by an on and off on a switch okay whether there's an electric current that passes through or there's no current okay so that's on and off it can you can represent that it's true or false one or zero and that is that's what uh, that is what is running on our computers, on your phones, on your gadgets. So, siya may pakananan, okay? So, uh, lahat ng design of uh, the circuit boards of any machines, okay? Claude Shannon has actually pioneered that one. And also, okay, um, because of that, he established the theory of information, okay? So, he's... Uh, called as the father of information theory, okay? At least for MIS, since they're dealing with information, you should know that Claude Shannon is the father of information theory, which is a study of quantification, storage, and communication of digital information. So, siya yung nasa picture na ngayon na nakikita nyo. Okay? Just a bit of history or background on kung sino may pakanan kung ginagawa natin ngayon. Alright, so next is, let's talk about how memory is structured. Okay, so we will take some, uh, as I mentioned, so ginamit ni Claude Shannon yung um, circuit boards, some switches, electric currents to signify on and off, right? Now, from our memory, okay, this is how our memory would look like, okay? So there are different addresses, okay, uh, which are indexed at, let's say, just an example, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. And for each of these um, storage, there are different uh, numbers that are stored. So it can be parts of an image, it can be parts of a Word document, of a video, and so on. 
Okay, so in each in each storage, okay, we can see some strings. Okay, if you are uh, we call this a binary uh, uh, a binary number. Okay, and each of this is what we call a byte. Okay, so a byte. Uh, sorry, each of this is a byte, and within each byte we have bits. Okay, so from bits coming from the word binary digit, so it's a fundamental unit of memory inside the computer. So it's represented by zeros and ones, which earlier we mentioned that it's uh, it can be represented as true or false or the flow uh, of the current on a specific uh, circuit. Right? So, yeah. so computers have ones and zeros in its memory. When we form eight consecutive bits, we have the byte. Okay. So most of the computers doesn't really work on the bits, okay? The bits more uh, is more on the hardware level, so that's where the current electric currents are. But for um, operation uh, op operational systems, uh, softwares, they mostly work on uh, bytes, okay? So it's eight consecutive bits, okay? As you can see here, one byte has um, eight bits, so zero 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 one zero one, okay? And uh, we also have another layer of representation, which is word, okay, which is the co most common integer size on a particular hardware. Okay, so that means that uh, this this size, this common integer size, can also vary from one machine to another. Yeah, uh, a lot across the history, so you know we, they are trying to standardize this, but again, this where this size, uh, integer size on the hardware is also what's causing the errors, the inaccuracies in computation. Okay, so yeah, we try to, you know, abstract ourselves from this to eliminate these errors, okay? Or at least hide these, er hide these um, errors, okay? So, yun. so if you've heard of megabytes, gigabytes, okay? Size of storage, diba? So it's actually a byte, not, megabits not gigabits and so on okay so uh yeah mega giga you just scale it uh based on the from the byte itself okay now we're going to review number systems and uh of course we're dealing with mathematics okay uh but this is something that you actually know already in your heads so uh if i ask you what does 357 means okay ano yung number na to? I have 357 all sitting beside each other. What number is this? Better kung mag-on kayo na mic to say anong number ito. Anyone? What, what do you mean, sir? How do you call this number? Integer? Mm, oh. I mean, just, just, okay, what is the number that I see on the screen? That's it. 357. Okay, Add 357. Add, Add numbers. numbers. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, so Jared was right, 357. Okay, and 357 means, okay, that we have, Three hundreds, we have five, well, tens. Hindi natin sinasabi na five tens, no? but we have 50 for, uh, as a number for that. And we have seven ones. Hindi natin, seven, hindi natin sinasabi seven ones, but we'll just say seven. Okay, so we have, this is the representation, or this is the equivalent, or this is what 357 or 357 represents. Okay, that we have three one hundreds, we have five tens, and we have seven ones. Okay. And this exact notation is what we call the decimal notation. Okay, so this is what we have been using in our daily lives, where each number or each um, slot here or number is represented using 10 digits. Okay, it's from zero to nine. Okay, and if we need more uh, numbers to represent uh, to represent numbers more than nine, if we need more slots, we just simply add another um, slot to the left. Right, so. Paglampas ng 9, if you want to say uh, one digit above 9, simply add 1 here and then move to 0. Okay, And then 
tuloy-tuloy yung computation nun. Okay, so number representation using 10 digits. So we have uh, here uh, using at the base 10. Okay. Now decimal notation, so I've mentioned base 10. Decimal notation is also called base 10. Okay, for the reason that the hundreds here, the tens and the ones, okay, we can represent it using uh, an exponent with a base of 10. Okay, so if we transform it here, okay, 10 squared means 100, 10 raised to 1 means 10, and this is supposed to be 10, but 10 raised to 0 is uh, 1. Okay, so it means exactly the same thing. Okay, so from here, 3 times 100 is equivalent to 3 times 10 squared, 5 times 10 to the 1, and 7 times 10 to the 0. Okay, uh, from a representation perspective, uh, it's usually not uh, uh, written with the base, so with the subscript of 10. Okay, so 357 with the subscript of 10 means that this 357 is read or interpreted at a decimal notation or decimal number system. Okay, on some programming languages, they treat it like this. So we have a prefix, which is 0D, and then followed by the number itself, which is 357. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so again, decimal notation, okay, we use uh, an exponent with a base of 10. Okay, so now let's try to go back to what was stored in the memory earlier, which is a series of bits, okay, ones and zeros. Now from here, we have this binary number. So this is now a binary number. We have ones and zeros. So what this exactly means, is it, kung kanina, it's, uh, we multiply them by a base, by, by an exponent base of 10. Now we will use the base of two because we only have two digits uh, we can represent uh, things here using two digits. That's why it's called binary, right? Uh, so yeah, so from here, we have one times two raised to two, zero times two raised to one, and one times two raised to zero. Okay, so exactly what we did earlier, except binago lang natin si 10, okay? So from, for the binary, we use a base of two to represent uh, numbers. Okay, so now if we add, so kanina, okay, we can go back to 357 by simply adding these three, diba? So three times 10 squared, so equals 300, five times 10 to the one equals 50, seven times 10 to the zero is seven. So 300 plus 50 plus seven is 357. So for binary, we do the same thing, okay? So one times two squared is equal to, Anyone? Okay. This is equal to? Four. Four, sir. Four, okay. Now zero times two raised to one is equal to? Zero, sir. Zero. And then this one? One. One, okay. So we do the same thing. We add them. Just and uh and once we add them, okay, and that but equals to uh I don't know how to raise okay, equals four plus zero plus one is five. Okay, which means that this number okay is equivalent to five in the decimal number system. Okay, so we can see at the bottom that a one zero one. Uh, and, and a base 2 notation is equal to 5 at a base 10 notation. And if we are using prefixes to um, represent binary numbers, it's represented by this prefix, 0b. Okay, this is 0. Okay, so far so good. Or are there any questions? Can you explain the letters in this defense again, sir? Uh, which letters? Like the B and the B. Why, why ah, okay. Um, these are the this one, the B. Right? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. So they are simply uh, prefixes 
to notify whether the number or the string to the right will be interpreted as binary or as decimal. Okay, so kanina we are using zero D to um, we are using zero D to represent decimal notation. So that, this means that if a programming language would read this 357, he will treat this at a decimal uh, notation or a decimal scale. Okay. Now, if the program sees um, zero B, meaning uh, he will interpret this as a binary number instead of 101. Okay. Because this is not 100, this is not 101. Okay? This is actually five in a decimal system. Okay. So prefix lansha. So if you see like zero B 101, that means um, we, will be, we will be treating this as binary instead of 101. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. So again, uh, ganun lang. So we simply add these items to arrive at the equivalent number of, um, of this one. Okay. So that's how, that's even how we convert binary to decimal. So let's say you've seen series of binary numbers, one, zero, one, 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 zero, okay? You simply look at the scale, okay? So the, the rightmost side is always the two, what my line? This is always the two to the zero. This is two raised to one. This is two raised to two. So sa example, natin tatlo lang, no? But if we, again, if we need more numbers, we simply just add more to the left. So this one is 2 raised to 3. This one is 2 raised to 4. And this one is 2 raised to 5. Okay. And again, if you need more, simply just add. Then that means this is 2 raised to 6. And this is 2 raised to 7. Oops. And so on. Okay. So we're just dealing with small numbers for now. Okay. Ngayon. Um, there are, that means if we, okay, from decimal to binary, we change our base from 10 to 2. That means we can also use different number systems to, um, to, and they are represented by a different number of digits. Okay. So one, uh, another common number system is the octal notation, which uses eight digits. So it's from zero to seven, okay? Uh, and again, since we're using eight digits, we simply change the base here to eight, okay? Yeah, eight ngayon yan. And if we look at this number, okay, five, two, three, this is not 523, okay? So if we have to compute this again, so eight squared is equal to 64. Tama naman math ko, di ba? So if we do five times 64, this is... I know. 320. 320. Okay. Now, 2 times 8. 8 times 8 raised to the 1 is the same. So, 2 times 8 is 16. Tama, no? Tama naman math ko, di ba? And then, uh, 3 times 8 to the 0 is 1. It's 3. Okay. Then, we add these numbers. This is equal to um, 339, sir. 339. Okay. Tama ba? And correct. Who was that? Sorry. Hindi ko nakita yung microphone. Uh, Lucia, Lucia pa. Lucia. Okay. Thanks, Lucia. That means 523 in base 8 or an octal notation is equal to 339 in uh, decimal notation, okay? And if we want to look at the binary, this is the equivalent binary, which is supposed to be two, okay? This is the equivalent binary for uh, this five, two, three on, octals, on octal notation, okay? Question. Are there any questions? So far, kinakaya pa ba yung math? Okay. Wala pa namang question. Sir? Sir? Uh, yes. Uh, can, you, uh, can you explain again the 
the octal notation, like how it became in that way. Mm, sige. So, kanina, um, if we go back to our normal number system, okay? Ito, 357. So, our 357 in real life okay, is actually a representation of 3 10 squared, okay, or 100. Okay, so 3 hundreds, uh, representation of 5 tens, and uh, 7 ones. Okay, so ito yun. Uh, because in our daily lives, we, represent, we can represent things uh, using 10 digits, which is 0 to 9. Ba? And if we need more than 9, we simply add another slot, which can also be represented by zero to, from 0 to 9. Okay, so, um, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, ba, da, da, 9. We add one more slot. Okay, it was 0 pa kasi yan, di ba? So we add one more, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, da, 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 99. We add one more, so it's 100. Yan, yun yung number scale, di ba? So if we need more um, slots to store numbers or store whatever counting thing that we are doing, okay, we just simply add another slot to the left and then we uh, represent again by from 0 to 9. Okay? Uh, kaya siya ganun. Ito yung normal numbers natin. Okay? Now, what we did okay, for computers, again, they are using electronic signals, which is an, basically an on and off, okay, whether there's a signal or not. So in computers, we rely on binary notation. Okay? So we simply change the base to 2 okay, from 10 because computers can only represent things using on and off. Okay? Let's take off the quantum computing if you, if you have seen or heard that. Okay? Let's rely on what we have right now. Okay? On computers, they rely on using electric, electronic signals. So there are two representations. So we replace the 10 with a 2. But we do the same arithmetic. Okay? So 1 times 4 equals 4. 0 times uh, 2 equals 0. And 1 times 1 equals 5. Then we add them. That's the equivalent number for, the, uh, for 1, 0, 1, which is 5. Okay? Now, using that logic, that means we can simply change the base, this one, and have a different representation or different number system at all. Okay, so um, other fields okay, would use an octal system, which means that uh, they are using eight digits to represent numbers, okay, which is a zero to seven. Okay, uh, that, so this 523 isn't really 523 in real life. But that that this specific number is equal to 339 on the decimal notation. Okay, so we arrived at octal notation by simply changing the basis of our of um, this um, exponent here. Okay, so if you let's say want to try what if what would um, 339 uh, B when we use uh, a notation with using three digits. So that means we simply change eight to three and you will arrive at a different number representation. Okay. Does that make sense? That was uh, Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. Yes. Jenny, yeah. I think I understood, sir. Thank you. Uh, so it's really more on how many symbols are we using to represent uh, numbers in general? Okay, so in real life, we're using 10, which is 0 to 9. Okay, uh, computers would use 2, which is 0 and 1. Okay, here on octalotation, we are using 8 to represent uh, numbers. So that's 0 to 7. And then if you have heard of hex codes, then we can also arrive at the hexadecimal notation. Okay, which uses 16, not exactly digits, maybe 16 symbols or 16 characters. And that's those 16 characters are what you're seeing on the upper right-hand side. Okay, so 
zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Pagdating sa 10, we are now using num- letters, which is A, B, C, D, E, and F to represent 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So the same thing, we have 0 to 15. Okay. Um, so if we have a hexadecimal number of 5F3, okay, we simply break it down. So 5 times 16 squared, 5, 15, which is uh, the value of F, 15 times 16 raised to 1. Uh, and then 3 times 16 raised to 0. Okay, so if we do this, okay, 16 squared is equal to... Aba. Anyone? 256. Okay, 256. And if we compute for the entire thing, 5 times 256 is equal to... 1280. One to eighty. One to eighty. Yeah. Okay. Tama no? Okay. Now fifteen times sixteen raised to one is the same sixteen. Okay. Times fifteen is equal to two hundred forty. Two forty. Okay. Uh, hindi ko, hindi ko double check the numbers na kayo sa mata pa. <laughs> So sixteen raised to zero is equal to one times three. Okay. Orita. Three, okay, and then if we add all of these, if we add these three numbers, we have one thousand five hundred twenty-three. One five two three. Is it correct? Yes, it is. So one hundred one thousand five hundred twenty-three on a decimal notation. Okay, on base ten, two seven six three on base eight on octal notation. Malina naman to. This is supposed to be 2. And this is the binary equivalent of this hex number. Okay? Any questions? Medyo clear ba yung flow from 5F3 to 1523? So we've been doing the same thing. We've been doing the same thing. So we have this number we look at its notation or its base, then we multiply each digit or character into the base, okay? To each slots, and then we add all of those, okay? So that exact thinking is already an algorithm on how to convert uh, an input of an input of a number from one number system to the decim- to its equivalent decimal notation. Okay, so hindi ko pa na banggit kanina, no? Uh, for hexadecimal notation, we are using 0x as prefix. Okay, so 5f3 on a base 16 is equivalent to zero, uh, 5f3 with 0x as a prefix. Okay, for octal, it's a 0o. Okay, 0o yung prefix natin for octal. Okay, any question? Uh, sir? Yes, uh, is, Gerard. Is there a reason why it's a letter instead of a number? Uh, because we want to keep. Uh, we wa- okay. Hindi naman. Okay. This is just my thought on why we're using no- letters. Similar to um, similar to our normal notation, the decimal notation, right? So wala naman. Hindi naman nagsisiksikan yung. 11 on one slot. So it's actually comprised of two slots uh, or, or two storage. Right? So here we want to keep it as one character per storage. That's why we represent them by a different notation instead of uh, adding, instead of having five, uh, five and then 10 and then three. Or five, 15 and three. Hello? I think it's PowerPoint. Okay, so instead of Having this, adding more, I would say, visual complexity, that's, it was just represented with letters, but mm-hmm. easier. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Whether you like, invented to my other thinking behind this, I'm not exactly sure. But for me, it's more of a visual representation. To keep things simple, that there's one character stored for each slot or storage. 
Okay? So now, if mapagkripan nyo, kunwari after this, what does um, 1523 look like at a um, base 20, kunwari, then you can simply expand this uh, G, H, I, J, A. So it's 16, 17, 18, 19. Until 19 lang pala. So it's until J. So magkakaroon na kayo ng numbers like 5, J, 2, kunwari. And it means totally different thing than 5, F, 3. Okay? So all these numbers that we have okay, in life, they are simply representations and as or there's simply semantics and you can represent each I, each thing differently so it depends on the standard and in our life the standard is decimal okay or base 10 Ganun lang yan. okay uh, i just want you to be in, uh to be aware okay, about of this now we can represent uh numbers differently depends on the Notation. But again, let's go back to computers. So we go back to the binary notation. Okay. Any wala na questions on the other number systems? Any questions? Or wala pa ma isep? That's fine. Kana bigla pa kayo. All right. So um, what we've been doing kanina, okay? Uh, earlier, we are simply trying to convert this number from a different scale which is binary uh what you're, what you're seeing right now is binary we're trying to convert this to decimal okay so yun yung approach natin now what we want to do now is if you're given a decimal number okay how do we convert it now to binary okay so that's a different thing so that's a different if we go back to the definitions earlier that is a different um uh, computational problem okay because you and this slide, on this slide, our input is a decimal number, or our, our input is a binary number, and our output is a decimal number. So now we reverse the input and output. We have a new computational problem. Okay, our input is a decimal. Okay, and we want to achieve its desired binary output. Okay, so now we have this number three five seven. It's on base ten. It's our normal three hundred fifty seven. Okay. And how do we convert this into um, to a decimal? Ah, sorry, to binary. Right? So if uh, what we do here is, okay, kung dito, okay, before I introduce the actual method, um, we are looking at a specific quantities, right? So uh, from this notation five, so this is five, a five has one force or one two to the squared or one two squared. Uh, there it has no two ones, two raised to one, and it has one two raised to zero. Okay. Tama ba? Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So tama naman, no? So our five uh, has uh, one four. It has no two and it has one one. Okay, so para nagbibilan lang tayo. Okay, so what we want to achieve here is that if we want a base, uh, if we want to convert this into its binary form, okay, uh, we want to know ilang twos meron for uh on each on this number basically. Okay, so what we can do here. Okay, is we divide it by two. Okay, so a 357 divided by two on an integer division is 178 with the remainder one. Okay, tama ba? Is this correct? Does this make sense? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, this makes sense, no? So now we will use the 178 for the next division iteration. Okay, we divide it by 2, we have 89, and we have no remainder. Tama?
give me a sign na naintindihan nyo to? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, tama naman yung logic, yung tama yung computation. Okay, now, with 89, okay, we want to know kung ilang twos meron for, uh, on 89. Okay, so to know how many twos on 89, we divide it by 2 again, which results us to 44. Okay, so there are 44 twos in 89. So we have, uh, but we ha also have a remainder of 1. Okay. Now, again, 44, how many twos in 44? We have 22, okay, remainder 0. For 22, we have 11, remainder 0. 11, there are 5 twos, but there, uh, we have a remainder 1. And on 5, we have 2 two twos with a remainder 1. And for 2, we have 1 two with a remainder 0. And for 1, we have no twos, but we have a remainder of 1. Okay? Clear? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So we're simply counting kung ilang twos meron for each of these numbers. So from 357, there are 178 twos. 178, uh, there are 89 twos. Okay? Quantity, you know, quantity and the object representation. 89, we have 44 twos. 44, we have 22 twos. Okay? Now, are you seeing some pattern here, especially on this slide? Where can we find our binary number? In the remainders. On the remainders, right? Yung how, many re how many remainders was given? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Lucia. Uh, yun. So, remainders, diba? So, how many remainders? But the problem here is, how would I read this? Do you think, do I go from top to bottom or the other way around? To bottom. To bottom? Top to bottom. Top to bottom. Okay. Uh, honestly, hindi ko sure yung logic behind this. But, uh, no, actually, hindi. There's a formal definition pala. I just remembered it now. Um, the binary digit is uh, uh, read from its most significant bit to the least significant bit. Okay, So the most significant here is uh, the last remainder what we are looking. And the least significant bit is the first remainder that we have seen. Okay, So that means we will look at Look it up from a top, uh, from a bottom to up approach or direction. Okay, so this gives us that 357 is equal to 10110101 on a binary scale. Okay, so this is the most significant. How do I represent that? Okay, type ko na lang. Okay, most significant bit, and this is the least. Significant bit. Right? So we go from the most significant to the least significant bit and we arrive at this binary number. Okay? Uh, sir? Yes. What do you mean by significant? How can you tell? Okay. Um, if you remember the um, significant digits on... Uh, the scientific notation. Are you familiar with that? Yung mga ilang significant numbers. So we are looking at the uh, the lowest number that we consider as uh, significant from a let's say measurement perspective, or uh, or the parang if the number has five significant digits, then we treat everything after five fifth digit as zeros already. Parang ganun. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Siya. Thank uh, you. So we're looking at the least, most significant kasi ito na yung pinaka-base na. So we are pretty, parang there's uh, more, uh, I would say more chances of winning, but hindi. parang more um, accuracy level at this point rather than at this point. Kasi the numbers are still huge here. Parang ganun. So for okay. now, just remember that the most significant bit is the last remainder. Okay, 
then the last uh the least significant is the first remainder okay that's uh, how we define it here so we go from most sig to least significant and we arrive at the uh binary digit okay all right okay so now uh using this method okay could you give me the binary form of 256 okay so i give you the 256 as the input okay at base 10 what is the equivalent at uh base 2 can type it here or can mention it on microphone. <laughs> Is it eight, eight zeros, sir? Eight zeros. So that means are all zeros? Or is Gerard, no? Uh, oh, I mean, uh, eight zeros, zero. yeah. One zero, 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 zero. One, okay. I'm going to PowerPoint. Too. Okay, one, and then followed by eight zeros, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that correct? Or how about the others? Si Angelo has the same answer. One, followed by eight zeros. How, um, who was the lady who mentioned it? Who spoke earlier? Was uh, you, Jenny? Jenny, sir. Yes. Jenny. Okay, Jenny. Okay. I also got eight zeros. <laughs> okay, eight zeros then, which is okay. Okay, that's correct. So two five six is e equivalent to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's equivalent to two raised to eight. That means our slot for two raised to eight will have one. And since you know, man, shawala ng remainder at all, whatever. So everything here will be zero. Okay. So correct. All right. So that's our. Uh, this is our algorithm for converting decimal to binary. So we divide each number. So we divide the decimal by the base that we are looking at. Okay. So if we are looking at octal, then we will use eight. We are looking at a hexadecimal, then we will use 16 instead. Okay, so we divide it and then we have an integer division, and the remainder will form the um the the number once you convert it to that to that num uh, number system. And to read that, we look at most significant bit to the least significant bit. Okay, so far so good. Clear pa ba? How about the others? Are you guys so, sir, okay? To clarify, most significant bit is uh, actually the last um, division for this number to convert this number into binary. Uh, I didn't hear the, the latter parts, but yes, the most significant bit will be the last uh, remainder that you will get. Okay, Once you reach zero, uh, you know. So our goal how here. You, how do you know oh, yeah. what the like, is the answer is one or zero? Uh, where? On the division? Yes. Uh, okay. I mean, if you look at here, if you divide one by two, okay, if we do the long division, right, uh, we will use zero here, and then uh, zero times two is uh, zero, and then remainder one, diba? So, ito lang siya. So, normal division lang siya without dealing with decimals. Okay? So, it's just a basic integer division. Does that answer the question? Uh, Jom, diba? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yan. So, we just we just do nor, uh, num, uh, integer division. So, ito, 357 Divided by two, 
So there's one, two, one, five, uh, seven, 14, eight, 16, and one in the remainder. Okay. And, and just continue doing the division, okay? The, the division method until we reach zero. And that signifies, uh, signif uh, signifies that the division process should stop. Okay. Okay. Is that clear or are there any other questions? Do I have a question? Yes. Uh, what are there cases ba na there are like more than one decimal place? So bale parang 0 0.05 or something. Do we run off? Uh, 0 0.05 during the division, yan, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, pagating kasi sa 0, we will only arrive at 0 0.05. Okay, if we go back here on this division, right? We will arrive at 0 0.05 if we uh try to eliminate the remainder. Diba? So if we go here, so 1 divided by 2, so we don't want any remainder, that's why we put a decimal point, okay? And then we add 0, diba? And then two, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 10 equals 0, and we arrive at a 0 remainder. So in that sense, okay, we only arrive at decimal places if we want to eliminate the remainders or simply converting those remainders into uh into a, a number so using this process okay if we follow this thought process no that we want to arrive at a remainder you will never arrive at a decimal point because we only arrive at a decimal point if we want to eliminate the remainder does that make sense Kind of, sir. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Kasi parang if you arrive at a decimal point, that means uh, on our, uh, let's say, standard or on this world standard, we want to eliminate remainder. Kasi remainders doesn't make sense in real life naman. I mean, from a measurement perspective, uh, you don't, we don't use one centimeter remainder two. <laughs> one centimeter remainder one. We don't use that. So we use, let's say, one point something 1.5 centimeters diba? uh but on a computer okay it, it only has zero and ones okay uh it can only uh can only measure finite things kumbaga. so we only use counting numbers that's why we arrive at a remainder so once you arrive at a remainder okay na yun. okay okay at least for our state now, it's okay. So uh, uh, we don't need to eliminate the remainder. That's why we will not arrive at decimal numbers here. Feeling ko nilito ko lang kayo lalo. Pero yun. Yun. Ang point ko lang is, you will arrive at decimal places. So I didn't, uh, uh, yun. So parang sinap king question mo. Uh, we will not arrive at something like 0005. Okay? Because this decimal place and this thing only exists if we clear out the remainder which is not our goal here we want the remainders to appear okay because the remainders would be our uh our way to identify the binary numbers okay union does that make sense Medyo na, medyo may onti clarity pa ba dun sa sinabi ko mo? Uh, I think mali yung example na like binigay ko na parang 0 0.05. Paano pag like 0 0.2? Wala na ba yan? Or like, okay. I, or I think nalilito lang ako sa concept ng remainder. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, saan yung 0.2? Is it, ito bang number na to? Yung ba yung input natin, 0.2? Is there, kunwari lang ah, like, uh, kaya, kaya may number na kaya pag divide mo by 2 magtitira siya ng remainder na uh, point 0.2 or something ah okay um, yung concept ng remainder doesn't fall 
uh, doesn't extend to decimal places. So, ang remainder will always be uh, a whole number. Ah, uh, okay. 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 Okay, I got confused. Uh, remain- Ayan. So, uh, okay. Yung pala yung part na yun. Yung remainder lang kasi is basically what remains after the division process. So, yun. So, um, ang gulo na ng screen. Para mababain to. Uh, erase all ink on slide. Okay. So let's say we have uh, 5 divided by 3. Okay. So ilang 3 meron sa 5? We have 1. Okay. And then we multiply it. So the thing that remains after dividing the 5 by 3, we have 2. So yun. So this is the remainder. Yan siya. So you will never arrive at a decimal point point on the remainder. Okay. Unless, again, unless, baka ito yung sinasabi mo. Kasi baka you're thinking of an input of 5.5 divided by 3. Okay? So, una pa lang, decimal na yung number na to. So, this will be 1, 3, 2, uh, bring down 5. Ah, ba ito? Tapag ginawa ko. Ang ba yung math ko dito? Wait lang. Ah, okay. 2.5 divided by 3, 0, 0, 2.5, 0. Okay, medyo, medyo complex ito. Uh, two, it doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Huwag natin, huwag natin pahirapan sa bilin natin. <laughs> Yan. So the remainders will always be a whole number okay coming from this one five divided by three one three plus two so whole number siya lagi okay okay sir. Lang. thank you thank you sir oh yun na lang let's huwag natin expand masyado uh you will never arrive at the decimal remainder when we are dealing with integers okay um now, in this sense, okay, maybe you're thinking, but that it eliminates this decimal. How are we going to represent decimal places now? Okay, so that there's another representation method for that. But in this case, again, computers are only dealing with ones and zeros, so we have to think at that level. We we need to think uh, at that realm, basically. So that infinite scale of numbers that we have in real life, okay we are bringing it down into something finite, into two, into rep- represented by two digits or two characters, which is zeros and ones. Uh, yeah, major extra philosophy lang on this. Okay, now after this conversion, okay, we still have to do one more thing, okay? At least uh, you want to learn one more thing. So from converting binary to decimal, decimal to binary, we also want to look at how do we do arithmetic at the binary scale. Okay. Let's say we have this number, binary number 101 and 110. So if we are using our uh, elementary math method, again, elementary math method, how do we add this these numbers? Okay, elementary math. We look at the, we start with the left or right most side. Start with the right side. Right side. Okay, we start, ones. okay so one oh. plus zero is one. One. Okay, then we move to the next. So zero plus one. 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 Okay. And we have one plus one, two. two, okay. But since we are on binary world, okay, what is how is two represented here? Anyone? Zero. Is it zero? Is it just zero? 
Zero one. Okay, so we have two, two answers now. We have zero and we have zero one. Francis, malapit ka na. Again, one zero. Thank you, Jenny. So we have one zero as two. So we simply put one zero. Okay. Again, bakit tagin two? Kasi this one is zero times two raised to zero. This is one times two raised to one, which is equivalent to two plus zero equals two. Okay. So maybe from this point, you try to memorize your powers of two. So we have two raised to zero. What is two raised to one? Two squared, two cubed, two to the fourth. Okay. If you have been using, uh, if you have been building computers, you should know this one, zero, two, four. Um, 205 uh 2048 mga ganun. okay so those were those are powers of 2 so again so our 2 is 1 0 okay because there's 1 2 raised to 1 and 0 2 raised to 0 okay if we convert these to um to double check if we are right okay we convert these to decimal notation Okay, so this is equivalent to this one. So this is a five. Okay, again. Um, okay, buhay natin tong ginawa kong memory. Okay, a one zero one is this one. So we have one one zero two and one four. So we have ah zero two. Dapat zero two. So 4 plus 0 plus 1 equals 5. Okay. It's exactly the same thing. Okay. Now our 1, 1, 0. Okay. So we have 1, 4. We have 1, 2. And we have 0, 1. This is equivalent to 6. And we have 6 here. Okay. Now our 1, 0, 1, 1. Kung saan saan ako nagsusulat. And we have one, one, we have one, two, we have zero, four, and we have one, six. Eh, mali. Mali yung ginawa ko. Ay, tama. Mali. We have zero, four. Ang ba yung math ko? Ah, hindi, hindi pala 6. Sorry, my bad. My bad. This should be 8. Okay. It's 2 raised to 3. So, 8 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 11. Hence, we have 11. So, that means our, uh, our computation here is correct. Again, thanks, Jairus. 8 plus 2 plus 1. Correct. Tama. Okay. So, so far, clear ba? So we are using the same elementary math method. Okay. We add, we carry over some bits, and then we continue the uh, we perform the addition. Okay. So if we go to the next number, okay, for practice, how do we how do we go with this? What's our first digit here? One. Okay, it's a one. And then, what's the next one? One, zero. One, zero. So, what's yung one? What's the next one? Zero. Okay, zero. And then? One. Zero. What's the next one? What's the next one? Wait, lang. Say, say lang. wait. Lang. Okay. Carry <laughs> over. What's the next one? Carry over. Carry over. Carry over. Correct. And then, now we add? Zero. Okay, zero. And then what happens next? Ten. 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 Okay, carry over muna, di ba? <laughs> carry over and then we have ten. Okay. And if we convert this again to uh, the decimal form, it's this one. So it's 11 plus 6 equals 17. We can double check if they're correct. Or we can double check. Okay. 
So na uh, this 17, so this is 2 raised to 0, 4, 8. Mali. This is 1. Wala, ko na lahat. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 16 plus 1, we have 17. Okay? Tama. Ngayon, let's add, let's try to uh, spice it up a little bit by adding another number onto our addition operation. So I'm just using the same numbers para madali siyang gawa ng slides. Okay. What will be our number first number? Zero. Zero. Okay, zero. And then we carry over. One. Okay. okay, and then ano yung second number natin? Zero. Okay, zero. Ah, is it zero? It's one. Bakit naging one? Okay, one plus one plus one equals? Three. Three, di ba? Yeah. And from a, from, on a binary scale, if the first the first slot is one, second slot is two, so we have one of each. So it's actually a one, one, or three. Clear? Clear, Bayon? Okay. Sige. Okay, okay, that's, that's fine. Sige. So we have three here, one plus one plus one equals three, diba? And three is represented by one, one on the binary scale. So we actually have one here. And then we carry over one on the next side. Okay. So for this part, ano yung, uh, what do we have here? Zero. Zero. And then? Carry over one. Carry over one. Okay. This gives us? Zero. Okay. Zero carry again. One. Carry one. Okay, and then we have 10 or 1, 0. It's not 10, it's 1, 0. One, zero. <laughs> okay. So far, clear why how we arrived here. Actually, ito yung, pampa, ito yung additional spice. Eh? Because we're dealing now with a, diff, with a different binary number. Okay, so we convert this. So 11 plus 6 plus 17 is equal to 34. Is this correct? So this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. We have 1, 32, and 1, 2. 32 plus 2 is equal to 34. Okay. So tama yung math natin. Okay. So what, again, if I go back, ano nangyari dito sa part na to? Uh, erase all. Okay. So the same thing. So earlier, if we add this one and one, we arrive at two. Diba? One plus one equals two. But then two is not exactly two on uh on the binary on the binary world. So it actually means one zero. So we uh, we put here the first digit and we carry over the next digit. So that's what happened. Now, and the same thing here, one plus one plus one is three. And three is not three on the binary world. So we drop the first digit here, which is one. And then we carry over the succeeding digits, uh, which is one here. Okay? Kaya siya naging, uh, kaya naging one ito instead of a zero. Again, again, three. One plus one plus one equals three, which is represented by one, one on the binary scale. So we drop the first digit here. And the second digit, we carry over. Okay? Clear? What happened? Okay. Sige. Now, the next question is, okay, part of arithmetic is to perform subtraction. Okay? How do we, how do you think how we deal with this? You know. 
Is it, is it just going to be zero, uh, one again? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's get, let's, before we go to our break, let's try to have an answer so we can compare it later. So you're saying it's one here? Then is that zero? right? Zero. Oh, How about this one? Zero. Why zero? That's a good one. Well, why? Um, you can look at this as a binary digit. This is actually. Yeah, I okay, PowerPoint. This is actually two in hindsight. So two minus one is one. 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 Okay. So let's leave this answer for now and see if we are correct later on. Okay. Now what I want you to think is how can we actually do subtraction by using the addition method that we discussed earlier? Okay. So I leave that question to you. Okay, to think about it, and then we're going for a break. Okay, uh, we can. I know that's about. It's twelve fifty. Yeah, we can go on kite mga thirty minute break pa. It's fine. I'll check up on you guys on twentieth minute. Okay, uh, you can have your lunch or drinks, whatever. Uh, play within the 30 minute time frame and I'll see you guys later. Okay. Break my tile. Try to absorb what happened earlier. Okay. So the question I will leave to you during the break, how can we perform subtraction using the methods that we learned earlier, which is basically just addition. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next couple of minutes. Think that past 
possibly maybe I'm falling for you yes there's a chance that I've fallen quite hard over you I've seen the path that your eyes wander down I want to come to I think that possibly I think that possibly maybe I'm falling for you. Yes, there's a chance that I've fallen quite hard over you. That make your eyes shine Now I'm shining to you Because, oh because I've fallen quite hard up with you If I didn't know you'd rather not know If I couldn't have you I'd rather be alone I never knew just what it was so good laying there wearing nothing but my t-shirt bodies in neighborhood wanna drive my lips all around it cause i'm holding my breath under the wind you're gonna wake up in my arms head on my chest my heart's beating i can't wait to kiss you each morning the strawberry sky Hey, 
그전에 삶은 다 하루도 대충 때우기에 급급했었잖아요 우리의 날 우리의 밤 그때 우리의 삶 You ain't I be my life 서로 채팅하는 법 서로의 닷 It's your baby's sky Get
No duele como antes, no La herida de tu amor sano De una vez por todas Soy más fuerte sola Es que no me arrepiento del pasado Sé que el tiempo a tu lado No te tengo a ti, me tengo a mí No es para que pienses que esto es para ti, no. Yo me fui para que no se te olvide Que una muerte como tú soy relieve Cuando se sé que el último mal Es cuando pensaré en regresar Está sobreentendido lo que siento Ya no estás, qué bueno es el tiempo Estoy cura de ti, te dije ya ya no te siento aquí, no te siento ya Nunca supiste, no me supiste valorar Y de una vez por todas Soy más fuerte sola Es que no me arrepiento del pasado Sé que el tiempo a tu lado cortó mis alas Pero ahora este pecho es Bye. 
You might already be familiar with binary. For example, this is uh, 101 is equivalent to 5 in decimal, and that's because this is the 1's place, this is the 2's place, 4's place, 8's place, 7. So that's simple enough. Uh, the other thing that is uh, maybe a little bit inconvenient, and we'll look at uh, some, some other approaches that, uh, that don't have this problem, is if you try to add
add these things together, things get kind of weird. So let's say we want to add a 5 and a negative 5. So normally, 5 plus negative 5, you would expect to get 0. Simple enough. But here, if we look at 5, 0, 1, 0, 1. And negative 5 is 1, 1, 0, 1. If we add these together, 1 plus 1 is 2, which be a 0 and then carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 again is 2, uh, but we'll put that as a 0 and carry the 1. And then here 1 plus 1 again is 2, so a 0 and carry the 1. So in this case, <laughs> what we're seeing is 5 plus a negative 5 is not 0, it's 0, 0, 1, 0, which, well, and, and we have a carry, we have a carry coming out of this, this, this one bit. Uh, that we don't, you know, if we're working with four bits, we're going to ignore this this carry bit. And so we have zero, zero, one, zero, which is uh, which is two. And so that's kind of weird. If we're adding five and negative five, we, we wouldn't expect. Something. 
요새 이런 게 유행인가 레드뷰리 재미없어 아 그거 나도 마찬가지 Tell me what I got to do 그반대로 블루투스 켜 아무 노래나 일단 줘 아무거나 신나는 걸로 아무렇게나 춤춰 아무렇지 않아 보이게 아무 생각하기 싫어 아무개로 살래 잠시 I'm sick and tired of my everyday Keep it up 한 곡도 주태를 부려도 No worries at all 이미 좀 외친 거 그래 박자 우리 길인데 Ooh, 늦기 전에 my pants bitch 이 시대가 얼마나 맛 편한 옷으로 갈아입어 You look nice, get him high 얼핏 보면 그냥 코미디 이렇게 무해한 파티 처음이지 방금이 겨울차 하는 새벽 두시경 수천과 감정이 쏙 돌이쳐 그래도 그리 다운 돼 있어 뭐가 문제야 say something 분위기가 겁나 싸이 요새는 이런 게 유행인가 레드 그리 재미없어 아 그건 나도 마찬가지 Tell me what I got to do 급한대로 블루투스 켜 아무 노래나 일단 줘 아무거나 신나는 걸로 아무렇게나 춤춰 아무렇지 않아 보이게 아무 생각하기 싫어 아무개로 살래 잠시 I'm sick and tired of my head I'm a nude, 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 I'm a nude,
Okay. Are we all back? Everyone here? Could you give please could you please give a thumbs up if you're here? Yeah. Okay. So Kanina before the break, we left off uh from this. Uh we tried to estimate what's the result of this one. Okay, so our initial answer Kaina, is 101. And I left you with a question on how to deal with uh, the negative numbers or at least with the subtraction using uh, the addition method that we learned earlier. Okay, I have given a bit of clue on what's the answer to that. Okay, so you could, if in uh, just a, 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 a refresher, okay? When we do subtraction, it's actually similar to adding negative numbers. Okay, so you, we can use the addition method earlier that we learned to, to conduct subtraction by dealing with negative numbers. Okay, so negative values is usually represented by a negative sign in mathematics. Okay, but again, from the context of computers, okay. They are, you could think of them as light bulbs with on and off switches. Okay, how do you guys think that, uh, how do you guys think computers represent negative numbers? Any guesses? Or baka may, may, nang, may alam sa inyo na sagot? Okay. Sige. 
So when it comes to computers, again, if you think about uh, the on and off uh, switches, no, there's really no way to think of uh, represent negative numbers. I mean, if we look at our lights, would it just go dimmer or will it change color? Maybe, I don't know. But still, it doesn't pretty much represent negative uh, side of the number scale. Okay, And even in real life, we don't have like minus negative five centimeters. Right? So usually we use the negative positive sign to denote direction. Okay, But in terms of calculation, we usually deal with negative numbers. So how do we do that in computers? So there are actually three representations of this sign change from positive to negative and vice versa. The first one is we have a sign bit. Okay, So at the start of the binary number, okay, which is the most significant binary bit, which is the most significant bit, it represents the sign. Okay, so if it's zero, it means positive, if, and if it's one, means it's negative. Okay, the other two ways would be to flip the entire binary digit from zeros to ones and ones to zeros. Okay, or the other way around is to after you do ones complement, you add one to the resulting number. So that is what we call the twos complement, okay? Uh, maybe too wordy, okay? So of course you will deal with this using an example, okay? So for uh, a sign bit, okay? Again, if we have 11 on a decimal scale, okay? It's represented by a positive sign, compositive. And on binary scale, it's on our binary notation, it's represented by zero, okay? So if we want to negate this number, that means we simply have to use one instead of a zero to represent negative 11, okay? So again, the most significant bit becomes the sign bit, zero if positive and one if negative, right? Clear so far using sign bit? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, madali pa. Madali pa naman. Okay, the other one is we flip the entire number. Okay, so from one's complement, if we have this 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 for positive 11, okay, we deal, we do negative 11 by simply flipping the numbers. So 0 to 1, okay, 1 to 0. Okay, easy. Okay, madali pa. Okay, so kung naman yung Num binary number niya on, on the positive scale, we simply flip it. So in case of negative 11, if we want to transform it to positive, again, we simply flip it back. Okay? But now, okay, who, how do we represent zeros? Okay? So if we use sign bit, which is the one on the left, okay, itong part na to, this one, this is sign bit, this is one's complement. So again, what? how do we use sign bit? We simply ang gagawin natin? Using sign bit, how do we negate this number? Turn it into one. Oh. Add one as a prefix. Okay. And how about on the right-hand side, which is the ones complement? How do we flip using one's complement method? How do we negate numbers using one's complement? Anyone? Turn zeros to one. Okay. So we flip it back. Okay. So, ayan siya. Okay. So we use one to represent negative and we use, and for one's complement, which is the right-hand side, we simply flip the entire number, the entire binary digit from zeros to ones or ones to zero. But then again, zero should be zero. So we have a problem here. Okay, so ayan yung dalawang number scale using sign bit and ones complement. So kaya may YouTube kayo na kasi I remember seeing this uh, as an example. So here, uh, yun, pagdating sa zero, 
technically we have two representations of zeros, which is which not, is not a good thing. Okay, but it's also unavoidable. It depends kasi on the design of the um on the design of the programming language, of the software, of the computer itself. Okay. So tendencies are yeah, ito. So we have two zeros, uh, two representations of zeros. Okay. So how do we deal with that challenge? Okay. We use the two's complement, which is flipping the entire number and adding one into it. So we do one's complement and then we add one. Okay. So if we go back to our example, this is positive 11, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay. So we flip it. Okay. This is the one's complement, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So we, and then we add one here at the end. Okay. So instead of zero, sha, okay. Yeah. One to zero. And then we add one. Okay. So that's the two's complement. So here we avoid the concept of uh, double representations for zero. So usually this is set up naman. So uh, if the design, the circuit board, or the uh, uh, the electronics knows that it will use two's complement, then it has its own representations of numbers already for all the numbers. So hindi na kailangan isipin na wait. Itong number na to is actually uh, one. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 8, 2, 10, 11. This means uh, 8, 1, 2, 4, 8, 12, 13. This is 13. No, uh, because we're implementing 2's complement, you understand that it's already uh, just actually negative 11. Parang ganun. Okay? So now, if we go back to our example earlier, okay, so we have this. Ito yung initial answer natin. So we want to check if this is correct. Okay, so by using the method of adding negative numbers, okay, usug natin dyan. Kinomplete ko na lang, we added zero because technically it's also zero. Okay, using one's complement, okay, how do we do? How do we do one's complement here? How do we transform this to one's complement? Sorry, how do we um, transform this number into its negative form using one's complement? Anyone? Okay, one's complement means we simply flip the numbers from 0 to 1 and 1s to zeros. Okay? So, ang result nyan is this one. So, it's 1, 0, 1, 1. Again, we will add a negative number. Instead of doing the subtraction, we add a negative number. Negative of this one is this one. Okay? Once complement, we flipped it. So, 0 to 1. Uh, 1 to 0, 1 to 0, and 0 to 1. Okay? And then, we do the addition. Okay? So, we arrive at this number. Okay? So, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, this is not exactly how it should be. Because if we, if ganto siya, okay, then we are simply doing the addition of these two numbers. And, Para tayong nag-add ng post, two positive numbers. So when we do subtraction using the ones complement, we add back this one. Okay, this carry over one. The overflow na one na to. We add it back. And then we arrive at the resulting uh, answer. Okay, this is how we do subtraction, binary subtraction using the ones complement, okay? Yung carry over, we add it back into the original sum and we arrive now at the same uh, result. Okay? Was it clear or yung isa pa? Uh, one minute. Sorry. Uh, let me give one more. Sorry, you want me to repeat it? Yeah, yes. 
Okay, sige. Okay, let's do it one more time. Okay, again. Ito yung dalawang numbers na um, sinasubtract natin. These are the two numbers that we're subtracting. 1011 and 0110. Okay? Again, we can subtract numbers by actually adding negative numbers. Okay? Or neg adding its negative form. Okay? So, from here, to, to arrive at the negative form of this one, we use one's complement, which is which means we will simply flip the zeros to ones and ones to zeros. Okay, so the resulting form of that would be this one. So one zero one one, and then we add the negative of this one, which is one zero one one. Okay, again, th that is using one's complement. So we flip this number, this to this one. A one to zero and zero to one. Okay, clear. So flip and then we do our addition. So one plus one, that is two, that is one zero. So this is zero, carry over one. One and one, that is two, that is zero, one zero, carry over one. One plus zero zero is one. And then one plus one equals one zero. Okay, that's why we arrive at uh, one zero one one or uh, one zero one zero zero. But again, we are doing subtraction here, so there's a diff there's additional step uh, aside from simply adding it. So whatever spills here, this is usually what we call the spill over or the carry over. So the carry over bits we add it back to. The original sum. Okay. Uh, that's how it's been done. That's the algorithm of it. So we add back the carry bits. So we add back one here. And we arrive at 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. That's why we end up with this one. And now we have the same answer. Okay. Uh, is that it clear? John, do you have any question? Okay. So, so far, yun pa lang siya. Okay. So, that's one's complement. So, we add the one after we do the addition. Okay. Now, with two's complement, it's a different thing because we add the one already during the negation process. Okay. So if we go to two's complement, okay, um, this is zero one one zero, okay. So if we flip it, that is simply one zero one zero. Sorry, uh, if you flip that in sha, this will be okay. Let's add another step. Uh, that this will be one zero zero one, okay. And then we add one, okay. So if we add one, this gives us. This is one, one plus one is one zero. Okay, one zero, lagi ko na. This zero and one. That's why we arrive at this one. Okay, so the two's complement is one's complement plus add one. Okay, is that clear? Clear so far? Okay. So now we proceed with the addition process. Okay, so we add here. Okay, so one plus zero is one. One one is one zero. Uh, hindi na magkakarry over since zero lang naman to. And one one is one zero. Now at this case, may sobrang bit pa rin tayo. When we use two's complement for subtraction, we simply ignore the uh we simply ignore the first, the carryover bit. Okay, we simply drop that, and we are left with zero, uh, one, zero, one, zero, one, which is equivalent to our first, um, our first estimate, basically. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear. Okay, so again. Uh, difference between ones and twos complement subtraction. Okay, balik tayo. Here, okay, ones complement we flip 
and then we do the addition and then we add back the carryover to the original sum. Okay, so that's the once complement subtraction or subtraction using once complement. Now on two's complement, okay, we flip and then we add one and then we perform the addition and then we drop any carryover. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. It might be overwhelming for now. I um, actually when I was reviewing these slides, may mali ang computation. That's why I was listening all, again back to the YouTube video just to clarify. Um, ayan. So I corrected my calculation here, and then ayan. okay. If you we can have more examples uh, to practice this one, okay. Uh, I'll just give that as uh, as a refresher homework or assignment. Okay. So that's the difference between ones and twos complement subtraction. Again, if you subtract using ones complement, we negate, we flip the number, we proceed with the addition, and then the carryover bits, we add it back to the original sum. Okay. If we are using twos complement sub in, in subtracting, okay, we flip the number to negate it, we add one into that resulting number, and then that number we add it, we add it on. We proceed with the addition process, and then any carryover bits we drop it off. Okay, so we neglect those um, uh, those carryover bits, and then we arrive at the same resulting result. Okay, so that's enough for now when it comes to arithmetic. We discussed um, addition, we discussed subtraction. Those are the two basic um, arithmetic uh, arithmetic operations. Uh, we also discussed uh, about conversion from one system to another. So we emphasize, we just did a little bit example, more examples on the um, decimal to binary and binary to decimal. So just make sure to review that. Um, just on the final notes, okay? So during your MSIS 20, you have probably have encountered different uh, variable types, okay? So we have the integer, we have the decimal, we have the float, uh, we have all of these uh, different variable types, right? So from a, from coming from this uh, concept that we have bits and bytes. Okay, so the first thing is that a byte is equivalent to eight bits or it's measured, uh, its measurement is eight bits or its size is eight bits. Now, when we deal with a short variable, okay, it's composed of 16 bits. Okay, so you could imagine you have uh, a memory or an array of 16 slots. So you can accommodate for that range of numbers. Okay. Now for integer, we have you can actually use 32 bits. So instead of just eight slots or eight boxes, you now have and instead of 16 for short, you now have 32 boxes. So you can fit more numbers in integer than in short. But still, there's limitation. That's why there, there's a long um, type. There's a long variable type. Other programming languages would have big or small integer, okay? Or may not having double to add decimal points or float to add decimal points into those um, representations. And this, this um, size limitation, okay, on... The integer, the long, the short, is the exact reason why YouTube updated their viewer count. Okay, because during that time, Gangnam Style broke YouTube view limit. It has reached the maximum number of views that computers could actually show. Okay, so na reach yung limit na yon, they have to move to a bigger um, variable that can accommodate more uh, view count, okay? So na reach niya, I think it was 2 billion. If I'm not mistaken, I think 2 billion yata yung limit ng integer, na, ng variable na yun. Uh, this billion, uh, thousand million. yeah, 2 billion, okay? So it has, it has gone beyond 2 billion views. That's why, uh, Nasira yung uh, UI ni YouTube that time, okay? 
So that's the exact reason why, because of these limitations on the number types. Any questions so far? Or I'm pretty sure the topic is uh, maybe too math heavy or too overwhelming. But so far, uh, any specific questions that you have on converting binary to decimal, decimal to binary, um, addition and binary addition and subtraction? Any questions? None, no man, sir. Just Unfair for the right? demarc. Would, would we be able to practice it more, sir? Yes. So um, I will give more examples. Okay. If you are part of the Discord server, I can I will share the exa uh, the practice um, problems first there. And then I will have a separate homework uh, assignment on Canvas, which is the graded one. Okay, the one on Discord server will be just on just for practice. Um, so it's not graded. So yung final quiz will be on the uh, canvas. Okay. It's okay. Oh, sir. Yes, uh, Rafael. Uh, sir, question pala about yung, ano, yung Python no homework. Kasi uh, the day seven, it can't be accessed. So bad. Hmm. Ah, yeah. So, tinanggal ko na yung day 7. So, oh, if you look at your canvas, wala na yung submission link for day 7. Thanks, because sir. I couldn't find um replacement or working link for that. And it's just about importing files. So far, parang di pa naman kailangan for this class. It's really just to check um uh, that it, more of a refresher course and also a review for you guys on the Python operations and so on. Okay. Any also, other question? Uh, yes, uh, sure. Yeah, regarding the seven-day Python review, uh, would it be okay with if we did not answer all the questions with like that chili pepper emoji? Mm, what do you mean? Because uh, some of the questions like have the chili pepper emoji saying that like it's a major harder question. And I was ah, able so to solve all of them. So mm -hmm. is that the challenge the questions. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. It's okay. okay. You can try think thinking about it more, Sigul, if you want. So or that's fine. Those were just uh, additional questions for challenge, Laman. Okay. Um, I just want to show one more thing for the last five minutes. So I'm going now here on Python, on Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so I have two variables here, right? String and uh, a number. So on, by default, okay, for most computer uh, programming languages, a number uh, they are on decimal scale. Okay, so if we have here um, ten, okay, I'll just put decimal. Okay, deck. So if we print out this string, it's exactly 0B101, okay? And that number will be exactly 10, okay? So, but now if we actually uh, turn this into a number, okay? Let's say 0B101, okay? So 0B is the prefix for binary, okay? And binary, which means that Python will read 101 as binary, and not as uh, not as 101. Okay, so if we output string, it will automatically convert it to the decimal form, right? So it's now outputted as uh, as five instead of zero b one zero one. Okay. Now let's say if we add um, a hex. Okay. Any example at kanina for the hex? It's 5F3, okay? So 5F3, yeah. screen, and screen share lang ako. Okay, so ito yung example natin, no? 5F3, and you, um, it's represented as 0x5F3. So if we go to Python here, 
Okay. Uh, the decimal form should be 1523. And if we output this, it says 1523. Okay. So yung question came on the prefix. It's really just a prefix on how uh, Python will read the characters after that. Okay. And of course, the settings here, hindi ko naman yung default. I didn't change the default settings of uh, Jupyter. So it will output, it will result, it will uh, show me or output a, uh, the number in decimal form instead of the binary form. Of course, we can transform the numbers to uh, output a to output on binary format or on this or on other scale. But in this case, just a quick example, I didn't do that. So, if when I outputted this five F three, which it will which should be treated as hexadecimal, it gives me fifteen twenty three. Okay. So, if you are looking at conversion, if you want Python, then uh, this is a quick calculator, I would say. But for the exercises, uh, please try to do it on how we did it in class, yung mga calculations and everything, because that is an, an, uh, a mental exercise on how to read uh, binary and hex digits. I mean, okay. okay. Maybe it's just, it's too um, superficial or I don't know, too mababaw. Maybe you are in a meeting with other programmers let's say and then suddenly a hex or a, a binary number appears and you don't have a computer at hand so how would you read that right so you still need that mental exercise to quickly think about those numbers okay so hopefully for the exercises use uh, the methods that we did but what I'm showing you right now is how it's running live on an actual programming language like Python Okay, so far are there no are no questions? All right? It's uh, two o'clock. Okay, so uh, if there are no other questions, okay, uh, Angelo, make sure. Uh, yeah, so he's been promoting the Discord server. So just make sure if you want to join, I uh, I, po I post there yung mga mabilis ang announcements lang mga one liner announcements. Okay. Um, I will also share some exercises there. So if you have any classmates that are who doesn't want to, to join the Discord server, okay, but is also interested on in doing the assignments, please share it with them. Uh, but yeah, okay. So don't go lalagay yung exercise. Okay, if there are no other questions, that's it for today. We haven't discussed analysis of algorithms, but again, earlier during those calculations, we are already practicing some algorithmic thinking okay yung pag add pa lang so i am trying to slow down oh uh, before we say before not drop yung carry over ano dapat exact the process we need to carry over so that's actually an an instruction or a separate instruction for the computers okay so we deal with each step one by one until we build our algorithms okay so next week we will discuss more on the uh, analysis of algorithms, how to count operations, okay? Let's say from this, from the algorithms earlier, how do we count the number of operations which will help us identify if this algorithm is actually scalable or not, okay? So that's it for today. If you have no questions, I will see you guys next week or on the Discord server if you want, okay? And please continue your lunch and have a great day. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you.